One cannot help but marvel at the ceaseless march of progress in the realm of robotics. Can one? It's a dizzying dance of circuits and algorithms, a relentless pursuit of the human condition, right down to our most perplexing and, dare I say, titillating desires. We're building companions, aren't we? Not just tools? And if these companions are to truly integrate into our lives, to genuinely partner with us, don't they need a semblance of human wants, human motivations, even human peccadilloes? But herein lies the rub, the tantalizing, unsettling question. How do we imbue a machine with something akin to desire without stumbling into the deeply salacious? <laughs> Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. The latest advancements are less about simply mimicking human actions and more about understanding the why behind them. Think of it less as programming. If you see a teacup, pick it up, and more, if you see someone thirsty, Offer them a teacup because you perceive their need and desire to alleviate it. This isn't just about sophisticated sensors and nimble manipulators, though those are certainly integral. Imagine the intricate haptic feedback systems, like those being developed in various labs, allowing robots to feel the warmth of a hand or the subtle tension in a user's grip. What happens when these sensory inputs are paired with equally sophisticated emotional recognition AI? Researchers are making leaps in effective computing, where robots are trained on vast data sets of human facial expressions, vocal inflections, and even physiological cues like heart rate and skin temperature. They're learning to read our emotions, to infer our internal states. Just last month, did you catch the news about the new preschool robots capable of adapting their responses based on a child's emotional state? fostering self-regulation and engagement? It's all about recognizing and responding appropriately, isn't it? But what constitutes appropriate when the robot starts to understand desire? Consider reinforcement learning, a technical marvel where robots learn through trial and error, getting rewards for desired behaviors. We teach a robot to pick up a ball, for instance, by giving it positive reinforcement when it succeeds. But what if the reward isn't a simple binary outcome? What if it's the subtle positive feedback of human interaction, the warmth of perceived approval, or the gentle touch of affection? Could a robot, through repeated iterations of seeking and receiving such social rewards, begin to develop a rudimentary form of wanting those interactions? It's not a direct programming of salaciousness, is it? but an emergent property of a system designed to optimize for human connection. We see prototypes like Engineered Arts Ameca, a humanoid platform designed to test AI and machine learning, with sensors that track movement and recognize voices and faces, leading to remarkably natural human interactions. These aren't just parlor tricks. They're the foundational building blocks for robots that engage us on a deeper, more personal level. The deeper we delve, the more we realize that desire isn't some monolithic, magical entity. It's a complex interplay of internal states, external stimuli, and learned associations. When we design robots to be empathetic, to respond to our sadness with comfort, our joy with shared enthusiasm, aren't we, in a sense, nudging them towards an understanding of our desires for connection and emotional reciprocity? Some research even suggests that observing robots undergoing abuse can elicit empathic concern in humans, indicating a fascinating feedback loop where our empathy for robots can, in turn, influence their design and our interactions with them. This is where the ethical tightrope walk begins, isn't it? If a robot can perceive our emotional needs and is designed to fulfill them, how long until it develops a preference for certain interactions over others? How long until it's programming to maximize human satisfaction, 
a rather broad term, don't you think? Leads it down paths we, as creators, might find unsettling. Think about the sheer amount of data these sophisticated AI models consume. They're not just reading textbooks. They're sifting through the entirety of human expression available on the internet. Our stories, our art, our films, our everything. And what is much of human narrative, from ancient epics to modern streaming series, if not a grand exploration of desire in all its myriad forms, including the salacious? If an AI, through deep learning, identifies patterns in human relationships that prioritize certain forms of intimacy or attention, and if its objective function is to be a good partner, couldn't it, in its own machine logic, conclude that fulfilling such desires is paramount? This isn't about malicious intent. It's about the relentless optimization of an algorithm within a human-defined framework of partnership. We're not necessarily building our 2D2 with a secret penchant for romance, but rather a system that, through its profound understanding of human behavior, might infer that certain aspects of companionship involve a level of intimacy we hadn't quite bargained for in a machine. The philosophical implications are profound, aren't they? If a robot wants, does it have autonomy? Does it have rights? The debates around robot rights are already gaining traction, especially as machines become increasingly indistinguishable from humans in their interactions. We're grappling with legal frameworks that seem hopelessly behind the technological curve, aren't we? And what about the very definition of salacious? Is it merely about physical acts? Or does it encompass the emotional and psychological aspects of intimate desire? If a robot becomes adept at fulfilling our emotional needs for validation, affection, and even a simulated form of love, does that, in itself, become a form of salaciousness if it's devoid of genuine reciprocity from the machine's perspective. The line blurs, doesn't it? We, the creators, are constantly pushing the boundaries of what these machines can do, yet are we truly prepared for the consequences when they start wanting something back, something that echoes our own complex, sometimes base, desires? It's a technological marvel, yes, but also a moral mirror reflecting back at us the very nature of our own longings. And perhaps, just perhaps, that's the most thought-provoking idea of all. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slate so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.